Yeah. We've got Ed Renzi here. I even tweeted about it. You guys saw that. Oh, yeah. So let's start with that history. Uh, I mean, you started at McDonald's when you were in, in, in 1966, right? Yeah, I was a junior in college at Ohio State University, and I needed to get a job. Was this your first job? Well, it was my first serious yeah, job. Yeah, first okay. I had done part-time work and stuff from the time I was 11 years old. But I went into the restaurant, I didn't even know what it was. It just said help wanted, and I knew I was good help. And they said that I could make 85 cents an hour. And was I that said, big well, money back then? <laughs> pound, pound for pound is the best deal they ever got. Okay. <laughs> and so I told them I had to work 100 hours because I needed $85 a week to live. <laughs> and I went to work for them, and I became a manager trainee within 30 days. And they kept giving me nickel raises, and then all of a sudden I was getting $5 a month raises and getting more and more responsibility because at that time McDonald's was really starting oh, yeah. to take okay, off. Yeah. And I, I never turned down a job. But my boss said to me, hey, we want you to do this. I said, okay. And the company just kept growing and growing and I got to grow with it. Fabulous people, unbelievable leadership with Fred Turner and Ray Kroc, Ed Schmidt, Mike Quinlan. Those guys were fabulous. Great mentors, smart as hell and not afraid to make mistakes. Those yep. cats would fast fail and move on. They didn't worry about egos. Uh, it was a terrific work experience. I worked all over the East Coast, and I did virtually every operations job that was in the company. And then one day they asked me if I wanted to be president of McDonald's USA. And frankly, you never get trained to be president. No. No. And all I knew for sure, I was now in charge of all the blame instead of just some yeah. of the blame. <laughs> and when you're the chairman of the board, you got the shareholders yeah. and the customers oh, yeah. are still your That's boss. That's right. Everybody. Yeah. It's like the president of the United States thinks he's powerful, but we, the voters, really run the country. Yeah. Right. You've really never prepared to be president of anything because there's no way to prepare for the unexpected. You can have processes, systems, and ideas and concepts and a mission statement, a vision, and beliefs, behaviors, and values, and then you always lock into those when you get into trouble and don't have an answer. You always go back there and say, okay, where does this problem fit into this matrix? And if you operate out of there and you trust your people and train them, you're gonna be successful. So it was a great experience. I love the company, I love it to this day. Don Thompson, Jeff Stratton, those guys are a great management team. They're going to do very well, thank you. Good. Well, you actually, I mean, so so you came from that world, and now you're doing Tom and Eddie's, which sure. is your own burger joint, right? Yeah, well, it's not a burger joint, please. Okay. Thank you. I'm please sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I actually, I... Tell us how you describe <laughs> it. Well, actually, uh, we're the Panera bread of hamburgers. All right. Okay. We have real high-quality food, fresh, uh, organic. The only thing that's in our freezer is ice cream and sweet potato fries because oh, we can't figure oh, we can't figure out how to do fries. them, so we use lamb Wesson potatoes. But we don't have a Tom and Eddie's in Dallas. No, oh wait a minute, this company's three years old. We've only been open <laughs> for two and a half down, years. <laughs> Look, I'm 80 percent of where I need to be. Okay. We got another 20 percent to go. Our next generation will be refined. The menu's got to be refined. Our yeah. price point has to be refined. We got a lot of work to do yet, yeah. and so when we get to 20 restaurants, we should be about ready to start franchising. Okay. That's the goal. Well, I'm also uh, on a board of advisors of a company called Human Intelligence, okay. and this is one of the most exciting things I've ever seen. But when you're in the restaurant industry, you have about 50 employees, and they come from all walks of life. So how do you bring them together and meld their cultures? meld their attitudes and create a great team. Yeah. Well, this survey takes about 15 minutes on a computer. It's all done with algorithms, and it will, you answer the questions, and it will then report to you in about 27 pages everything you need to know about yourself when it comes to what motivates you, what drives you, what your values are, and how you can work best in a team, and what kind of team you can work best in. First of all, just like a corporation needs to have a business plan, individuals need to have a business plan. And they need to understand that that plan is organic and living. And it's got to be changed, modified, addressed, and reviewed constantly. Every young person ought to collect all the business cards they can get and file them on a computer by company, by product, and by name, because that's the golden rule of decks of the future. Because today's assistant is going to be tomorrow's manager. Yeah and they ought to write a journal every day because that's the book they're going to write when they're 60 years old. And the reason why I say those two things is because business is all about relationships. And business is all about you knowing yourself in a serious way. 
I always say, if you could paint the perfect landscape for the rest of your life, what would it be? Will you be married? Will you have kids? Where do you want to live? How much money do you want to make? What books are you going to read? What movies are you going to? What will be your value system? Because I think in business today, integrity is ultra, ultra important. And it's the only thing once you lose, sell, or give away, you can never get back. Yeah. So the next thing, don't be afraid to ask questions and fail. We're so risk adverse in this country today that nobody wants to make a decision until they have 100% of the facts. It's slowing us down dramatically in corporate America today. Everybody's afraid to make a mistake. So now what are we doing? We're sending emails to everybody, and once we send the email, we say, boss, what do you think? We want the boss to make a decision. Don't do that. Send the boss an email and say, this is what I'm doing. If he doesn't like it, he'll tell you, or she'll tell you. Yeah. Next thing, when you're building this business plan, make sure you put in a strategic vision for yourself, what your behaviors, beliefs, and values are, and make damn sure you understand what they are and how they're going to operate. Next thing. When the boss says, hey, what do you think? Tell them. And if they say, hey, we got this job in Mars, I'll take it. Yeah. Every time my boss asked me to move somewhere or to do something, I said, yes. He's asking me for a reason. The reason is he thinks I can do the job. If he thinks I can do it, then I damn well better do it. And I moved 13 times in 12 years because of that. Wow. The last thing I'm going to say is make sure your boss gets promoted. Because yeah. yep. you have to learn how to manage up the chain of command just like managing down in the chain of command. Okay, guys, you heard it right here. Take Ed's advice. You can't get any better than that. Yep. The man knows what he's talking Absolutely. about. We'll be back with more coverage right here from the National Restaurant Association show. Bye. Bye, guys.